Hello, I'm Mark, and I've uh, worked with Assembly in 2018 and 19. Uh, my main project was uh, the 3D printed humanoid arm, and uh, we use a lot of uh, open source and uh, widely available information and codes and uh, materials. Our main source, our main goal was to uh, help people understand that finding technology and integrating it with your life and basically making cool projects is not that hard of a task. All you need is a little bit of dedication and uh, you should be on your way. So the overview of the project was there was a loop motion sensor that captured the motion of the user's arm and it sent it back to a um, code that was written in processing. And uh, that code, code basically translates the coordinates of the fingers and the wrist and the elbow and sends it back to uh, the Arduino that can drive the motors. Uh, so to give you like more details about the project, uh, this project was fully 3D printed. Uh, we took almost about two weeks to print all the parts. And we ran into some trouble because not all of them were fitting the standard local servos here. So we had to also tweak that a little. Uh, after that, um, we tried to like put it all together. With the servos, we used approximately four, not four, six to seven servos because uh, each finger had a servo uh, like allocated to it. And there was one servo for the wrist, so it does the wrist rotation. And another uh, uh, servo that was integrated later, and that was for the elbow motion. Of course, uh, for that servo, we needed a bigger one uh, because it would be driving a lot of weight. And for the muscle, uh, the muscle movement or the contraction of the fingers, we used uh, Fish, uh, fishing cords, which are basically very strong, very tense uh, fishing string, sorry, and uh, they connect to the tip of the finger and go to a tunnel back to the servo. So when the servo rotates, it pulls the plug, it pulls the string, and the finger contracts. And to bring the, the finger back to its initial place, we had it fitted with a parachute cords, which are very elastic, and they usually stay in form. So when, this, uh, when the motor relaxes, the tension on the string itself, the tension on the parachute cord, pulls the finger back to its place. On the software side of the whole uh, project, there was a processing uh, code that basically took the data from the leap motion and we coded the Arduino through processing uh, by using the Fermata protocol which basically helps and makes you, it gives you the ability to surrender your hardware of the Arduino to another, uh, to another platform like Unity or you can put it on uh, processing or whichever, honestly, whichever platform you want to use or comfortable with using. And you can code the hardware with your, uh, within the same code that you coded the other aspects of your project in. All of the Arduino ports were giving out, of course, PWM because we were driving servo motors. And uh, we ran a little bit into uh, our issue because these were a lot of servos. And uh, yeah, not one Arduino can help that. So we hooked up the whole thing to a pretty big power bank that's giving uh, 2100 milliamps. Uh, but it ran smoothly after that. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Hi, my name is Zinni, and I worked on the revamped humanoid. In the first version of the arm, the user inputs were taken in through a leap motion sensor and were replicated on the arm. In the new version, we added a game mode for rock, paper, scissors, which took the user inputs again from the leap motion and played against the, the user. The way this was done was the inputs coming into the leap motion were run through a neural network to process whether the user has put a paper, rock, or scissors, and that allowed the neural network to identify and play again. The way this was done was by having the neural network send signals 
on the serial monitor to the Arduino based on whatever the user has selected. So say if it was a paper, it would send a value like A. If it was a rock, it would send B, and et cetera. And based on that, the Arduino would process it and try to play fairly against the user. Okay, so uh, before we go on, we are of course showing you all the Arduino projects, uh, but these are the bigger projects that we've worked on over months and done them for like, you know, major events and all that. However, the assembly is also, is also a community that meets every week for workshops. So every week we are building mini projects and we're doing a lots, of, a lots of different things, not just with Arduino, but with all sorts of skills. And we believe in building something at the end of every session. And uh, so Arduino, of course, is one of the main uh, you know, technologies that we use just specifically for that. In fact, uh, uh, we've done probably like more Arduino projects than any other platform on there. But we'll give you a small preview about what we do. Uh, and I will actually just walk you over uh, the different projects right now that we have done, the different workshops. OK, can we start the video? Yeah. OK. OK, so this was an interesting one we did, which was half science experiment, half technical workshop. Now, magnetic levitation, of course, is uh, you know, well, the, the underlying part of what you use even in, uh, uh, you know, when you have and you get your hyperloops and all that. But we wanted to build a very simple proof of concept and we just wanted to show how you can levitate. So the Arduino was switching on and off the electromagnet, you know, hundreds or thousands of times a second and it was just, it, it was just maintaining exactly the right balance. So it was very key to, to key, it was very key to actually just coordinate that and you can see how we got that. The other workshop that we did that was very popular was gesture control robotics. You saw the, how the arm was working as well. Uh, so we riffed off on that. We showed people how they can use the leap motion and translate. You can see the arm there. Uh, the arm was just for demonstration, but to give them an idea of how the arm works, we, kind of, we made small cardboard cutouts, which we just had like uh, servo motors pulling on the fingers uh, with, uh, with that, and that the, the motion was synced up with leap motion and processing. So once they got the hang of leap motion, they could actually like connect them to the servos and just see how the Arduino could drive it so that it would mimic the hand gestures. So very simple robotics uh, lesson, but a very effective one, and uh, people were very interested in that. You can see our arm is very makeshift. We just use little pipes and all that. Uh, of course, we went with a full robot as well. We've, you've obviously seen this design before, so we built a walking and dancing robot. It's just a 3D printed uh, box with a few servos at different articulation points and driven by an Arduino, but with the shield also applied there. So everything was self-contained and the robot could be programmed according to different motions and different, uh, you could even time it according to a song. So uh, when we do these assembly workshops, we make sure that every, like say, people form into teams and they're, you know, say five people at a time would have uh, you know access to a kit so people collaborated and worked there you can see ultrasonics we didn't use that there but we could probably actually uh, do that another uh, another workshop that we did that was a lot of fun was the laser piano I mean laser pianos and laser harps and laser these are usually done for uh, you know big installations but the concepts are very simple and you know we just of course we didn't use uh, we didn't bother with the 3d printed case here but we just used a little bit of a rudimentary setup with lasers there and okay you can't hear the sound right now but you could play different tones that were generated by the piezo buzzer uh, whenever the thing was been. Now you recognize Judy from earlier on. Judy uh, has also done quite a few assembly workshops. He's a, like I said, he's an old friend of the assembly. Now this was something Judy had devised where he wanted to see how you could trigger a camera shutter on your mobile phone through your audio jack. And um, you know, he, had, he, he did a lot of research, so you can see we got a very uh, detailed explanation there. And every time, um, every time that, uh, it ran, you got that. Uh, this was another recent workshop we did where we showed people how they can use capacitive touch for fun objects. So you can see, like you can press a, every time you press the, the coin, the LED went on and off. Then we showed them how you can make a flower petal piano. We showed them how you can write text on paper and then that actually suits them. So they were able to use it as a keyboard just by pressing down on text that's over there. 
And then finally, this was our rose petal. Uh, we picked flower petals and we actually got them connected up so that we could actually play the piano with them. This was another fun, a simple fun workshop we did where we wanted to show people how they can build a simple LCD game using an Arduino and an LCD screen. We did take it up a bit a, no a notch because we also showed them how they can convert it to the, for the OLED. So there were a few different aspects of that. And you know, people are, one of the things people don't realize is our crowd is very eclectic and we have a lot of people who are interested in building things. They're not just software people. Even if they are software people, they're interested in working with hardware. So we have a very different crowd and so this was some of the simple games. Obviously the OLED you can see is a little more complex but we showed them how to build that. So there's plenty that we could do with that. Now this is something which we, for which we have, we did purchase new equipment. We used uh, the Arduino IoT Cloud. Again, Arduino uh, very graciously provided us with, uh, uh, you know, with, a, with a professional account for that. The Arduino IoT Cloud makes life a lot easier. And we also synced it up with Telegram, uh, you know, so that we built a Telegram bot that could communicate with the Arduino IoT Cloud for home automation. So you could switch on your lights and switch off your lights remotely. So as you can see in that demo. Right, so that's it. I just wanted to show you a little bit about that. We will then now take you back to the quiz slides.